Good morning, everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm going to uh, to present today a, a short presentation about the updates of Pine and in particular about uh, let's see if they, yeah uh, the integration of external resources into Pine. That is something that in the in this project in BD2K is is uh, one of the goals to to integrate different tools. Uh, and then I will show you some updates on how we integrate uh, information from some from different different resources and how we have include some external tools uh, of analysis in in Pine. So uh, these are the five points that I'm going to cover. So I'm going to show how. Pine serves as a long-term storage of proteomics experiments and how then uh, all the data can be visualized. And then <clears throat> I will show uh, how we integrate information uh, from an external uh, uh, resource like Uniprot. All the annotations that are there are mapped automatically to the proteins uh, of the, our experiments and how we can visualize all this information. And then uh, the fourth point is how we can query over all the data, both the experimental data and the annotations. And finally, uh, I will show you how we have integrated two uh, enrichment analysis tools uh, in, in Pint. Uh, and I will show you two cases, the PCA quant uh, tool and, and Reactome enrichment analysis tool uh, and I will show you in a moment. So this is a, a very brief uh, summary of how uh, Pine is uh, working. So we have uh, our mass spectrometry data and then in, in our experiments we have uh, always a data analysis pipeline ca that can be uh, uh, um, uh, can, can have several uh, steps uh, like search engines, uh, identification, validation, uh, quantitative analysis, uh, statistics, but also uh, we have uh, very often we have uh, additional manual analysis uh, or manual annotations uh, as well as the use of external tools which are not uh, very well integrated in our pipelines. So. At the end, we have final result, a final list of uh, proteins with some annotations, some scores, some statistical uh, values associated, and, and we need to store all this information. So that, that's why uh, we have uh, developed Pint, uh, which is able to capture all this information from uh, 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 some files that we are able to read, like uh, uh, DTS select files or census files in our case, and we will increase our coverage of, of uh, file formats that we can read. Uh, but also, um, in, and that is very important, we can incorporate any Excel table in our pipeline. So, Pint is able to integrate all the information even when uh, this information is coming from uh, manual analysis or external tool analysis. So once we have uh, the information stored in Pint, uh, no, sorry, first of all, this is how uh, the, the user can upload the data into Pint. So uh, there is like a, an interface for defining all the experimental design of the of, of the assay, so the, the user have to uh, uh, define the experimental conditions for so for each experimental condition, which sample has been analyzed, and then uh, can define uh, some ratios uh, between which conditions are these ratios calculated. Uh, then, for example. Uh, uh, which are the MS runs, uh, then which are the, the input files that are used and that I'm gonna, they are going to be read. Uh, so here at the left there is a, like uh, where, where the user can define all the uh, 
experimental design items, let's say, uh, and then here uh, the user is able to, to, to fill all the information in several tabs here, up here, and, and then when all the data is, is ready, the user will click here on save and then import and if everything is well defined, there is a check of uh, a validation for for missing information. And if everything is fine and is consistent, the information will be stored in, in the database. So once is uh, now yes. So now uh, when the data data is uh, stored, we want to visualize the data. So mainly we have uh, this uh, uh, data view here. Uh, where we have several levels of visualization, so from ESM level, peptide level, protein levels, and also protein groups level. So uh, I will show you. So in this case is the protein uh, level where you can see all the proteins here with uh, all information uh, about it. And then if you click on one protein, you will see all the ESMs uh, associated. If you go to the peptide uh, level, you will see all the peptides, and if you click on one peptide, you will see all the PSMs associated, and the same for the protein groups. The protein groups are grouped uh, uh, by uh, using an algorithm which is called P-analyzer, and, and it's is basically uh, make groups of proteins based on how they share the peptides and, and classify these groups in several categories like conclusive, ambiguous group, or uh, non-conclusive or indistinguishable. So this is, for example, uh, how we can visualize the PSN level with all the quantitative information here. So we can see several columns. So at the left here, we see, we can select uh, which column we want to include in the in the table, and then we can sort and everything the, the tables. In this case, we can see all the ratios, different types of ratios that are coming from our input files, uh, with some uh, graphical representation of them. So in this case, this uh, this sets of PSM seems to be down regulated. Uh, mainly because they are towards the left in red. So, and then <clears throat> uh, the next step is then is, is that when we upload the data, automatically uh, Pint is gonna search in uh, external annotations. Uh, so, and mainly we, we got uh, the, all the information from Uniprot. So, uh, because we want to know what is known about my proteins and peptides, and even if the user is only uploading a Excel table with one column with the protein accession and one other column with peptide uh, uh, sequences, uh, the system is going to retrieve all these information that uh, is associated in Uniprot, and is going to be able to include all these columns where, for example, you can see the function of the protein, and if you hover uh, over some uh, columns with the mouse, you will see um, even more information. So, for example, here you can see the protein coverage graph, and then if you hover with your mouse in each piece of uh, information uh, of the sequence here, that is in in in, in orange, it becomes red, and you can see that this uh, protein coverage representation is for this particular protein, uh, that the total length of the protein is 679 amino acids, and then this particular piece of the sequence is 138 amino acids, which is at 20% of the sequence and is from the disposition 147 to 285. Um, we can also see uh, so all the genes uh, that are annotated in Uniprot uh, that are mapped to these proteins are, are annotated here. And then if you hover with the mouse, you see uh, uh, 
the full name of the of the gene. You can click on the gene and go to this repository to see information about that, and then you can see also uh, some synonyms of the gene name. Uh, you can at peptide level in this case you can see, uh, for example, uh, if one peptide is mapped to more than one protein, you can see which is the starting position for each one protein. Uh, and then, for example, in this case, in this peptide, uh, you can see this uh, modification here. Uh, <clears throat> and there's more information like uh, there's a button when you have shared peptides in one protein, so you click on that protein and then you will see how these uh, peptides are shared by this protein. So in this case, there are two proteins, and then the red one is a subset of the blue one, and you see all these uh, peptides. The blue ones are unique proteins, uh, sorry, uh, unique uh, peptides, and these um, gold, gold uh, uh, um, peptide is a, is a non-unique peptide, which is shared by, by these two. Uh, peptides. Um, here you can see uh, in this this will be a, a protein group which is uh, uh, formed by these two uh, subunit. The subunit alpha isoform one and and two. And you can see clearly with the protein graph uh, protein coverage representation that this second. Uh, protein is a subset of this first one and therefore is tagged by a, as a non-conclusive protein. So all this information is available there and most of, of, the, of this information is, uh, is, a, is um, available for query as I'm going to show you now. So all this information, the the experimental information, but also all the annotations are available to be queried by uh, a query system. So uh, recently we we developed a simple query uh, system, which you just if so for cases in which you just want to focus on or, or search for a particular uh, protein or small. Uh, protein family uh, which share a, a gene for example so you can uh, search by protein name and while you type uh, you, you will see a, a, a list of proteins uh, uh, available with that name uh, the same for protein accretions and and the same for gene names so while you type you will see all these uh, in, um, possibilities to, to select uh, but then uh, you can also uh, query in an advanced query editor with uh, several uh, query commands uh, which we are always uh, improving and adding new ones. Uh, so here, for example, uh, we are looking for uh, uh, proteins and peptides uh, from our dataset which have uh, an amount, this command AM is amount, an amount which is at protein level, uh, so it's SPC, a spectral count, so uh, an spectral count greater than 30 in the condition mutant. And that they are annotated in Uniper with an active site. So we just uh, write this in this uh, editor, we can uh, uh, make logical combination of these uh, queries and then we'll re we will retrieve uh, the information. In this case, we retrieve five proteins uh, uh, and more, uh, more about 1,000 PSMs um, that are uh, 95 uh, peptides, different peptide sequences. Uh, then you can download the data by clicking here and so on. So these are how how we can query over the Uniprot annotation about, uh, uh, over these external annotations. We have right now we have these two commands where the first one you can uh, specify a particular uh, 
Uniprot annotations, annotation types, and, and annotation groups, which are grouped in Uniprot header lines. Uh, so if you go to uh, Uniprot uh, uh, flat file, you will see these uh, sections, let's say. So you can specify all this information here. Uh, but also you have this other uh, command which allows you to search in any uh, annotation type and uh, annotation section. Okay. So, uh, and then, well, uh, well yeah. Uh, and then the, the fifth point is the integration with external analysis tools and enrichment analysis tools. So, uh, here, uh, as I said before, we uh, have uh, integrated PSA Quant. You know this tool um, is, has been developed here in, in our lab, in John Jett's lab, by Matthew Lavalle Adam, um, and it's a, a protein set enrichment analysis tool uh, for label free and label based uh, mass spectrometry data. Uh, and then I will show you now also the recent uh, integration of uh, the Reaton, the Reaton vi um, uh, visualizer of the pathways, but also the uh, the pathway uh, enrichment analysis tool. So for PCA one, we have uh, up here uh, uh, a new t a new tab where uh, you see all the so it's a replicate, let's say, of the of the input form, which the original PCA quant page have. So, but the difference is that you can select the particular. Uh, so instead of select an input file uh, with your proteins and your uh, replicates and quantitative values, in this case you select uh, the the information that is. Uh, in your project, in your project store in Pine. So you select which information, which quantitative information you want to submit and which are your replicates. And then uh, internally uh, the software will create a, a, an input file for uh, PSEQUANT and will send the information to be analyzed and the, uh, the user will get the, the result by, by email. And in case of Freeactome, <clears throat> we have, uh, so we, uh, when we went to UK to the VI uh, in Kingston uh, uh, some weeks ago, uh, we uh, we met with the Reaton team and it was a very uh, useful uh, meeting where we were able to get the first step of the disintegration and now we almost have finished. Uh, we have been uh, involved in other things and that's why it's not fully finished but is uh, so the main functionality is 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 done. So uh, right now we have a, a tab here uh, where we can see the React on view where we see all uh, these uh, representation what they call the fireworks. Uh, representation of the pathways and then if you click on one of these uh, fireworks you see the diagram the representation of the of the of this particular pathway that you have selected <coughs> but then up here you see uh, this other tab which is the data analysis uh, and then uh, you can uh, submit the information that you uh, currently have in your in your uh, system, so it can be after loading one whole uh, project or several ones, or after making a query and um, you want to analyze what is coming from this query, so you can submit here and send it to Reactome. So we have included also uh, this new feature. Uh, that is available in the last version of Reaton, which is to include interactors, uh, which uh, I think well, uh, Antonio will explain the next time he gives the talk about Reaton. But uh, this is a new feature which is able to increase the background of the pathways and then, and therefore, uh, to increase the, the number of hits at the end. Um, 
<clears throat> so it just submit the data, uh, Reacton is going to analyze the data, and then uh, almost instantaneously uh, you get uh, the, the significantly uh, represented pathways in your sample. So we have to still to uh, uh, make some modifications on these uh, numbers to be more readable and so on, but all, mainly the information is there. So you have the full scale rate, the, the p-value and the ratio about how many pathways are found uh, against the total of, of pathways and so on. So uh, then if you click here on one particular pathway you know, of, the, of the analysis, you will go automatically to select the, the pathway in the view and and also if you open this uh, you click on this uh, pathway you will see the diagram so <clears throat> this is more or less uh, what we have integrated until now but we are uh, also planning to integrate some uh, other uh, projects like Pry archive so the idea is to ask if my protein has been already seen in uh, in another project. Uh, so for that, we will use the Pride Active uh, RESTful web service API, which uh, we can ask, for example, to to maintain an updated list of project sessions, and then for each project to ask for a particular protein that we are interested and see if in that project is has been seen or not and we can do the same for for particular peptides uh, and another uh, integration that we can do is uh, uh, to use the cyclic uh, restful web service also uh, which is the upo proteomic standard initiative uh, web service that TBI uh, is maintaining to standardize the access to molecular inter interaction databases uh, by web services programmatically. <clears throat> so the idea is that new integration of external annotation sources in PIND uh, will help to link our experimental data with annotations, with information uh, that is there, and that is very useful for for the people which is uh, which who are um, generating in, uh, data every day uh, in the proteomics labs. So that's more or less what I wanted to present. So just to uh, uh, say that our pint server is located here, but uh, the idea is that uh, this tool uh, will be available for. Uh, every lab, so every, the idea is that this is not only one pint. Every lab uh, that is uh, interested can have his own repository to store his uh, data. Uh, and then we have here the, the Java code at GitHub. Uh, we have moved to this uh, account uh, for, for the lab. Um, and that's all, so thank you very much. Thank you for to Thank you to the Reacton team, which uh, they have been always uh, very available to help. Uh, and thank you to my colleagues, uh, Matthew, Robin, and Casimir in my lab, which uh, have been contributing also to the development on, of the, and the ideas of Pines. And that's all. So if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer. <clears throat>